Hello friends, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, let's have a look at problem 1216 together, valid palindrome 3. So for this problem, we're going to share a dynamic programming solution in this video. And first I'll read through the statement of the problem, and then we do the reformulation and explain the idea, and finally we share the code. Uh, given a string s and an integer k, return true if s is a k palindrome. So a string is a k palindrome if it can be transformed into a palindrome by removing at most k characters from it. So let's look at the examples. So in example 1, so k equals 2, so we can remove b and e to get a palindrome. So we get a, c, d, c, a, right? So that's the output true. So in example 2, uh, k equals 1, we can also um, get a true. So what we can do is um, we can delete a b. So we get a, b, a, b, a, b, right? So uh, it's actually easy to cook up um, examples that we need to return uh, false. So let's look at the constraint about this problem. So the length of S is greater or equal than 1, that is not empty, and less or equal than 1000. Um, S consists of only lowercase English letters. And the K is greater or equal than 1, less or equal than the length of the string S. So one thing to notice is that if k equals n or n minus 1, where n is the length of s, so we should return true. The reason is that single character or empty string should be regarded as palindrome. So with that said, let's look at the reformulation of the problem and the method. So um, we can reform this problem by the following. So we want to check if there is a palindrome subsequence of length at least n minus k, right? So if this is the case, we're going to return true, meaning that uh, we have um, k palindrome. So otherwise, uh, we return false. So for this problem, after reformulation, it's a standard dynamic programming solution. So if we introduce a two-dimensional dp function, let's call it fig, right? So fig is interpreted as the length of longest palindrome subsequence um, starting from i and ending at g, both ends included. So the recursion relation is actually very standard now. So fig equals um, fi plus 1, g minus 1 plus 2, if the two characters at index i and index g are equal, right? So the interpretation is like this. So the longest palindrome subsequence length uh, between index uh, i, g equals the one between i plus 1, g minus 1, plus 2, right? Otherwise, it equals the larger of the long length of palindrome subsequence uh, starting from i plus 1 and ending at g, or starting from uh, index i and ending at um, index g minus 1, uh, in the case that uh, the characters are not equal. So again, let's emphasize the interpretation. So fig, so starting from i and ending at g, means the length of the longest palindrome subsequence in the closed index interval, i, g, right? So with that said, actually we can give a quick walkthrough after you know initialization. For example, one, this is the final state of um, the DP table. So zero and five means the l zero and uh, zero one two three four five six. Uh, zero six element five means that for this string, the longest um, palindrome subsequence actually is five. So 5 is greater than the length, that is uh, 7, and minus 2, that is 5. So 6 is greater than 5, so we return true. So that's analysis for example 1. So similarly, we can walk through example 2 and return true. So with that said, let's uh, write the code. So in fact, this 
after this reformulation, this is a very standard problem. So let's quickly write the code. So first, I'm going to track the length information for s. So then I'm going, I'm going to um, first do a case check. Maybe so if uh, n equals um, um, so let's see if uh, k equals n or k equals n minus one. So I'm going to return true. So <coughs> then we are going to take care of the generic case. So here I'm um, initialize a DP table. So you can think of this DP as the um, F. So zero times um, M for a dummy variable. So in range M. So with that set, uh, let's first set the uh, diagonal, diagonal element. So because single character is palindrome. So for I in range M. So DP I I equals one. So with that said, let's uh, set the other element. So notice that in order to know index i j values, uh, we need to first know uh, index i plus one, j minus one, um, and i plus one, j, i j minus one uh, values. So for that, let's um, do the traverse uh, in the following uh, order. So <coughs> I'm going to start from i in range. So I'm do the recursion in the inverse index order, n minus one up to uh, index zero. So I write negative one here. The increment is negative one. So for g in range, so in this diagonal element, uh, we have treated the single character case of palindrome. So here we just need to g runs from i plus one up to m, right? So first we consider the case if s i equals s j. So in this case, so d p i j should equals um, d p i plus one j minus one and plus two. Otherwise, we're going to choose uh, the larger, right? Among so this two i to g minus 1 and dp um, i plus 1 up to g. So in between, actually, when we set um, dp i g, we can check because the current uh, uh, length or longest uh, palindrome specific length possible uh, is dp i g, right? So if dp i g is great or equal than n minus k. We are going to return true. So this is the, an early stop condition, right? So after the set, uh, after setting the whole table, so we are going to return false if true is not returned yet. So that's the whole code for this problem. So it's very straightforward after we transforming the problem. So let's do a special case check. It passes um, example one. Now let's do a generic case check. Yeah, it passes the generic case. So for this problem, I think that some other practices uh, plays a role in solving this problem. For example, we have practiced uh, how to find uh, the longest palindrome uh, subsequence in a string. So this problem is effectively a variant of that problem. So with that said, um, I guess um, it's the end of this video. Thank you very much.